Goody, welcome to Dublin. Rugby World Cup 2023, France is upon us. Who do you fancy getting into the tournament? Well, we're in Dublin. Um, it'd be rude not to say Ireland. Obviously, with everything they've done over the last few years, where the group's at, they look settled. There is the issue around Sexton. And when he comes back from his ban, they've got a tough group with South Africa and, and Scotland. And there is always that issue that they've never been past a quarter final. Sorry about that, Steve. <laughs> um, but they are looking exceptionally good. For me, there's three teams at the minute that are look well prepared. They're in good form. They know what their identity is. They know how to play. Uh, and that's Ireland, France and South Africa, who are just World Cup beasts. Not New Zealand? Uh, it's difficult after they got hosed by the South Africans um, in the warm-up game. But yeah, they're going to be a threat. Of course they are. They're, they're, their pedigree uh, it stands you know, for itself in terms of World Cup wins and experience in their squad. But are they at the same levels as the Irish or the South Africans. I think Ireland, if they could pick a quarter final and it was between France or New Zealand, they'd probably pick New Zealand, which sort of goes to show where New Zealand are. They're not the best team, but they're still a very handy outfit. So, And on that, Goody, I think the first game of the Rugby World Cup, it's France versus New Zealand, Friday night, under the lights, home crowd. Like that's going to be really important, especially for the Irish boys. They'll be watching on because if New Zealand, there's a big upset, do you think there could be an upset or do you fancy France? You know, like I, I think there is going to be an upset somewhere. Yeah. And I think personally that might be like in a quarter final, a knockout game, more pressure. You know, the, the teams in the groups can all afford to lose a match. But I fancy, I, I sort of fancy Ireland to get New Zealand in a quarter final and for South Africa to upset France in a quarter final. Yeah. And for me, South Africa are going to go on and win this competition. They were ranked fourth in 2019 getting into the Rugby World Cup. They were ranked fourth before their last game against New Zealand. So yeah, big, strong boys, Goody. I think they're going to run over a few lads, yeah. cause a bit of havoc. Well, they know their identity as well, don't they? They know how to play the South African way. And actually they've added to that with width and um, you know, the layers of attack. They've got some really exciting players. Kane and Moody has burst onto the scene as well. Arenza on the wing, obviously Cheslin Colby. Um, so they've got Stardust on the outside, but they have that brute force power. And just seeing them empty their bench with whether it's six from the bomb, bomb squad, squad. Yeah, it could be seven from the bomb <laughs> squad. Just the power of that scrum and what it brings. Uh, it's actually a tough job, I think, for Ninaba to know what is his gun 15. Yeah. Um, but he's got the luxury of if, if it's not working after 45 minutes, we've got equally good players on the bench, equally big. And they're just so physical, aren't they? So it's going to be interesting. The France-New Zealand game is very similar to the South African-New Zealand game, the last World Cup in that group stage. Going to be so intense. There's pressure on France. It is a home World Cup. Um, you know, they are expected to get to the finals, I think. Yeah. Um, their nation wants them to deliver, and there is a lot of positivity around how they're playing. Um, they've got the best player in the world in DuPont at the minute, but you're right, there could be an upset, um, and that is... The upset for me is England not getting out of the group, maybe. <laughs> well, you don't need to worry about that. I think, you know, the way Fiji played against England, I think they're going to struggle. However, they've got a chance to redeem themselves. One thing that Irish fans have been talking about religiously over the last two or three decades is that we always peak too early and that we go into a Rugby World Cup with all this hype, that, this expectation. You know, the players are in good form and then we sort of have a, a sluggish match leading into it. This time it was against Samoa, the boys didn't play particularly well. And then all of a sudden a small bit of pressure comes. Do you think Ireland are good enough to get past that and to break the duck of a quarterfinal stage? I think they are. Um, you know, you look at historically what they've done has been very in between World Cups. This time, you know, I need to go back to last summer and they beat New Zealand in New Zealand in a test series. First time they've ever done that. Um, and that instills different belief because you may be playing them in a quarterfinal. Um, they know they can beat France, they beat them in the Six Nations. And I think there's a slightly different mentality to this group than what has been going on in previous Ireland teams who have been the best team in the world at times going into World Cups. But yeah, there's a, a, a determination and an understanding that they've beaten everyone. Yeah. Whereas that Ireland team previously were the best team in the world on stats. So Ireland, Ireland are going to win the World Cup? Potentially, yeah. Potentially. <laughs> I, I, who, who are your winners? If, you, if you're going to pick, if you're going to pick two teams to be in the final. I'm sure you've had a look through the the group stages and into the quarterfinals and see who potentially can meet who. Who's your final, and then who's your winner? Right now, uh, I'd say my final would be two teams in green: Ireland and South Africa. Um, I, I agree with you. I think South Africa probably beat uh, France in a quarterfinal, um, and then from the other side of the draw, well. 
that's the sort of seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth best teams in the world. So, yeah, you know, I'm a passionate Englishman. I want England to win. Um, I can't see us getting to a World Cup final, but we didn't think we'd beat New Zealand in the semi-final four yeah. years ago. And there is that sort of knowledge of experience from a lot of those players that are still there. I just think we're way off the pace. So for me, Ireland, South Africa, I don't want the French to win. Not a home World no, Cup. No. Um, and I, you know, I love coming to Dublin. I love being in Belfast. Yeah. Um, Ireland are primed and ready. Their squad looks great. A lot of it does rest on Johnny Sexton. Yeah. And can he go back to back, quarter final, semi final, final? I hope he can. Is um, there a worry, Goody? Is there a worry now with Kean Healy being out injured? I know you used to be a part of the front row union when you had the extra 16, 17 yeah. kgs on. Now you look like a, a proper fly half. I don't know about that. But uh, do you reckon there is a, a slight worry there if Ireland, say, lost either Andrew Porter or Tag Furlong? That they couldn't match the physical power of, of South Africa or France. Yeah, that is a query and that is a question. Kean Healy is devastating for him and the squad. Such an experienced player um, and someone that you've relied on off the bench. Used to be a first choice player and you know, Porter and Furlong are the two superstars of that front row now with Sheehan who's you know, potentially got a little niggle as well. But um, squad depth is going to be tested, isn't it? And that's why a lot of the time you, you go to the Springboks because their squad depth is so big. Ireland, when they've got their gun 15 out, and if Farrell can sort of manufacture it so those players get adequate rest, you need a bit of luck to win a World yeah, Cup with injuries and bans. Yeah. Um, and those guys, Furlong and Porter, are going to be crucial because I think the step down without disrespecting you know, the other guys underneath, that Porter and Furlong are world-class operators. You know, if one of them gets a niggle or isn't well looked after throughout the tournament, and it's a long tournament, it could, it could be an issue. I say to people, Goody, that you know, if South Africa lost their first choice, tight, tight head and loose head, they wouldn't be as good. And it's the yeah. same as any other team in the competition. And that's what Ireland need to do. They need to manage their squad. Andy Farrell's done that very, very well over the last couple of years. One thing, though, with their if you protocol in place is that the players don't play consistently week in and week out for their club. So the likes of the South African boys, they can do, they can back up seven games on the bounce. Yeah. They're very durable. The attritional rate is through the roof where Ireland can go three or four games. And that's why I like the way our group is staged. Yeah. We have Romania up first, we have Tonga, then we have South Africa, the big one, and then Scotland, who we usually beat. Banana yeah. skin? Sorry? Scotland, they're a banana skin. <laughs> our Scotland, a banana skin. I think the way they're playing at the minute, Goody, they are a banana skin. Um, we have such a good record against Scotland. They seem to be a team now that don't roll over. They would have done in the past. A bit more resilience in the squad. To Palatu in the centre is extremely tough. You know, the, the two South African lads on the wing for Scotland. <laughs> Very good as well. Um, Hoggy's obviously retired, but uh, Kinghorn or whoever you play back there, the, Finn Russell pulling the strings at 10. The thing for me is, do they have a front five to be able to compete against South Africa? No, <clears throat> against Ireland. I don't think so either. So, yeah, I think Ireland just have a little bit too much. And if we beat South Africa, then it'll make that Scottish job just a little bit easier. Speaking of South Africa, Ireland, I'm exactly the same. I think South Africa are going to win this uh, Rugby World Cup. Who would you pick as your top try scorer in the Rugby World Cup? If you're considering that you know, those two teams that I mentioned are, are going to be in the final, would you pick one of those? Or, or would you look at the, the group stages and see, like, OK, Ireland are playing against Romania? Playing against Tonga, might be a couple of lads there that you know, score a few tries. Yeah, so the way you look at be, it. I think there's going to be an anomaly, right? Because there are some perceived easier games. Yeah. Um, but then you don't tend to play some of your First front liners. Game. So you might play Matt Hansen, he might pick up four against Romania, but then he might get re rested in another game. Uh, but he's going to be there for all the gun yeah. 15 games. So uh, for me, uh, Damien Pinot on the wing for France. Uh, obviously, they've got New Zealand in their group, but playing Italy as well, gives them opportunities to score tries because they'll go fully loaded with that. Um, you've got Cheslin Colby, uh, Aransa, Kane and Moody, who's scoring tries for fun at the minute from South Africa. They're scoring a lot of tries yeah. as a team. Uh, and it's not just through the bomb squad coming on driving malls. <laughs> they have that width and that interceptability as well. So uh, for me, Jordan uh, over in New Zealand as well, he's a real threat, uh, literal try scorer machine in terms of what he's done in the start of his international career. But for me, I think Damien Pano is just one of the best wingers in the world at the minute. His finishing ability, France score a lot of points. He's getting on the end of them. He's creating tries for himself as well. So I'm probably going to go Damien Pano. Yeah, for me, I think you've got to look at 
how effective the maul has been for a lot of teams. And obviously the hooker is usually at the back of it yeah. and just dropping over the line, all the hard work being easy done job. by, but easy job done by the big boys up front. I know Dan Sheehan probably won't be fit for the first couple of games, but if Ronan Keller against Romania, if he starts against Romania, he could easily score four or five tries. Like I'm not expecting the Romanian mall defence to be that good or the Tongan mall defence as well. So yeah, might be a, a, an outset. You, you always look at the betting, don't you, going into games and the likes of Dan Sheehan or Ronan Kelleher, they're always like, just behind the wingers yeah. for the first try or last try. So, yeah, that would be my outside bet for somebody like Ronan Kelvin. Oh, you're going to forward, I'm going to back. Something in there. Well, maybe. You're in such good shape, but do you reckon you'll get a call from Steve Borthwick? No chance. No, no. chance. Well, After you rinsed him in the media all yeah. the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been tough, hasn't it? Like being an England fan is tough now. But give us an honest kind of assessment of why England are in the situation that they are heading into the Rugby World Cup. You talk about momentum, right? And obviously, Without Andy Farrell, Ireland have built this momentum. They've built an understanding of how they play. England looked lost under Eddie Jones. I don't think the players enjoyed that environment. We started going backwards. So there was the whole sort of fanfare around getting rid of Eddie, but they brought in his protege and Steve Borthwick. And Steve's and the coaching team, and they're all great blokes. And you played with Steve? Yeah. You know, he's only sort of two or three years into being a head coach. Now you've got one of the biggest jobs in the world. I'm not saying it's the biggest job, but yeah. one of the biggest jobs in the world as England head coach without a back catalogue of experience. Then you bring in Kevin Sinfield, wonderful human being. He's only been in rugby union for Not much experience, years. yeah. Kevin is a brilliant bloke. Our defence is struggling. Uh, and then your attack coach is Richard Wigglesworth, who's been a coach for two or three years as well. So we haven't got massive experience. It's, yeah, the way we're playing. But you do have really good players. We do. You know, and that's the thing, you see them playing week in and week out for Harlequins, for Leicester, for Saracens. They dominate in, in you know, the Heineken Champions Cup. They're you know, always there. They go into an England camp and they seem to go into their shells. Yeah. Are they playing to a game plan or are they, can they not just go out and express themselves? We're playing to the Eddie Jones, Steve Borthwick game plan of kick it, drive line outs, try and have this power game that we don't have a massive forward pack to be able to play that way. So we need to shift the point of attack. They look like they're in a straight jacket. You know, there's overlaps in games where we're putting it on the boot. You know, other teams are getting to an edge and attacking with shape with two different layers of attack. England, their go-to is put a spiral bomb up, put a grubber kick through, put a box kick up, and we're not really testing defences. So we've got some good players. Maybe we think the Premiership is a lot better than it is. Yeah. And probably that's true. Do you get out of the group? Uh, do, do England get out of the group? It's, t it's tough to say no. Guess. Tough to say yes. I'm an England fan yeah. and I'm a proud Englishman, but it's tough to say yes at the minute as well. I think Argentina are massive favourites in our first game now, uh, just off the back of England's performances, but they do. These guys have muscle memory of big games, World Cup, semi-finals, quarter-finals. Eventually, when we get Farrell back from his ban, you know, leading into hopefully a quarter-final if we've not lost our first two games. And it is a genuine worry now because Japan can surprise teams at World Cups. We've seen that before. Japan aren't anywhere near the team that they have been at the last two World Cups, but they still have that factor of we've beaten South Africa, we've beaten Ireland, we've beaten Scotland at World Cups. England aren't that great right now. So do England get out of the World Cup group? Yes, I think they do by the skin of their teeth. Let's not forget Samoa look a half-decent team as well now with the influx of yeah, the likes of Stephen Luatua, who's and played... Wanga looks a, reminds me of a, a young Andy Good back in the day. The, the jersey's a bit tight around... He's had a good summer, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, he's had, had a good summer. summer. <laughs> uh, but they've got some class operators. McFarland, who's a Saracens player, you know, he's burst onto the scene in the Premiership over the last year. His athleticism is off the charts. You know, you've got Fritz Lee in the back row. Yeah. We've watched him in Europe. He's a monster. So England have got some, you know, what looked like two years ago, a comfy group. We've now got with our performance levels being sort of low uh, and other teams improving like Samoa, like Japan and Argentina, it's a tough group. Um, and a value bet might be, and I hate to say this, but England might not get out of their group. See what those odds are. Goody, is there a chance that England could come good in this competition? They could catch far welcome players back like Billy Vinopolo, Owen Farrell, and be possibly the surprise package? and make their way through the tournament and end up being a real force to be reckoned with? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we're probably at our lowest ever ebb as a, as a nation, lowest world ranking at the minute. Uh, performances have been poor, but there is muscle memory of these guys. A lot of these guys you spoke about there, Farrell, Vunapola, Laws, Itoji, Curry, when he comes back, they've been to a World Cup final. So they are big game players, 
in a bygone era, uh, but the reality is they have that muscle memory of understanding how to win big games. And we're down in the dumps at the minute. I'm hurting as an England fan, but do the warm-up games really matter? Well, not if we get out of the group and we get to a quarter-final. And you look at the way the draw is, um, and you look at the tough side of the draw, they've all got to play each other to get to a semi-final. Um, you know, we'll play, if we qualify from our group, we'll play either Wales, Fiji, or Australia, probably in a quarter-final, um, which means that you know, you back yourself getting to a semi-final. As, as we saw in 2019, I don't think many people gave us a chance of beating New Zealand in that semi-final, and we did. We found something within us, England's best ever performance probably, um, in terms of winning something where teams didn't think you were going to win. And so we, I, I do think we have that in us. Uh, am I backing us to do it? My heart says yes, my head says absolutely no. Um, but momentum shifts in World Cups, you get a bit of luck with injuries. Maybe we've had all our injuries in our bands at the start of the World Cup and momentum will gather and grow um, and we could get to a semi-final and play Ireland. From an Irish perspective, never been past a quarter-final in the World Cup. You're coming into this one with great hopes and everyone both inside and outside Ireland probably believes this is your greatest opportunity to be the second Northern Hemisphere team to win a World Cup. As a true Irishman and a guy that's been there at the coalface and now a supporter, a pundit, what are you thinking? I think this glass ceiling's going to be broken in a quarter-final. I think it's Ireland's time. They've got the team to go on and win a Rugby World Cup. They've got quality, they've got experience, they've got youth, they've got a great head coach in Andy Farrell, they've got an unbelievable um, competitor and um, rugby enthusiast in Paul O'Connell leading the line out. You know, you've guys that have been and done there, worn the Irish jersey and with pride and with honour and they know what it takes to go out on the big stage and they, you know, they, they've dug deep themselves but haven't been able to get over the line and they're just ready to blow. They really are. They're ready to get out to France, lay down a marker in their first couple of games. Romania, Tonga, South Africa. Will they beat South Africa? I think it's going to be the toughest game for them because we get the knockout, get to edgy, get to Rugby World Cup final, you're playing against South Africa. You might not be playing the same South Africa you played in the group stage, but this Irish team, the whole nation is behind them. The belief is there. Um, and I think the way they've played over the last year would suggest that they're just being themselves. And that's what Andy Farrell always talks about, just go out there and be yourself. And that's something that you look at the English team, they're completely not, they're in their shells. We throw up speculative offloads, we play sometimes behind the gain line to get an edge four or five phases later. We've got players that can run through people, but we've also got players that can put people into a hole. Look at Josh van der Fleer uh, a couple of weeks ago, just that little tip on pass, Peter Romani straight through, little tip on to Bundyaki and you're in under the sticks. And I think they're, they're just a team that's gelling really well, both on and off the pitch. And for me, I think Ireland, are, this is their best chance ever to get past that quarterfinal stage and go on past the quarterfinal, they're going to be a hard team to stop. Ireland to win it then? There's a pause. It's just the strength and depth in the squad and it's going to be tested. There's going to be injuries. It can't be like 2015, Paul O'Connell, Peter Amahney, Johnny Sexton. There was one more in there, I can't remember who it was, that were, were out for the quarterfinal and we were relying on the likes of Ian Madigan. Um, you know, Luke Fitzgerald to come in and, and other guys with not as much experience. That just can't happen. If it does, we're not going to get through a quarterfinal. So we need our first choice, 23 players, to be fit and ready for a quarterfinal. If we can do that, we'll get through it. If we get to a final, who knows? But I tell you what, Paris will be. There'll be some of my Irish fans in Paris and I'll be there cheering them on. I love watching the Irish team play. Can the players cope with that pressure and understanding that this is their best opportunity to win a World Cup and bring it home. Yeah, I think they can, Goody. I think, um, you know, being part of the 2011 Rugby World Cup, we were, you know, being talked about, myself, Sean O'Brien, Jimmy Heaslip was like the best back row, best back row trio in the, in, in the world rugby at that stage. And I think we almost started to believe our own hype. And like, you looked at the two team sheets between us and Wheels in the World Cup quarter final, and, you know, 90% of, you know, rugby supporters would have went, oh geez, you know, Ireland are going to win this game. With such a good record against Wales previously as well. I think we'd won the previous three or four games against them. Confidence was really high, but it just shows you if you switch off for, you know, five, ten minutes in a game that, you know, any team can hurt you at that level. So I think Ireland have showed, they've went away to New Zealand, gotten away series victory. They've beaten South Africa at home, beaten France at home. Anybody that comes their way, yes, they have a game plan and a, and a, you know, a blueprint that they, they stick to a lot, 
but they can vary their game and that's something that Ireland haven't had previously. We had one way of playing and if that didn't work, we were like, right, okay, we need to try and do this better. And then if that didn't work, it was like disaster. Um, where Ireland now, they, they, they can manage a game better with their kicking game. You know, James Lowe, he turns up at first receiver. You have Mack Hansen, who's always you know, causing havoc. You have really good ball players in the back row with Josh van der Fleer, Keelan Doris. And it doesn't matter if it's Ram Baird or, or Jack Conan or whoever plays in the number eight jersey. They're all capable of, of putting somebody through that gap, getting into multi-phase, you know, really stressing teams and getting in behind teams. And I think in previous years and previous World Cups, we just didn't have that firepower to be able to do that. It used to be just give it to the biggest guy to try and get you a gain line or give it to Draco or give it to, you know, Rods to send up down into the corner. And, and when those that little bit of magic wasn't happening, then we were on the back foot all the time. And in knockout games, you need to have two or three ways of being able to play. Uh, and I think Ireland have that now. And that's why I think, you know, they're, they're much better um, in a much better position this year than they have been in previous World Cups. Must be those English coaches, eh? <laughs> uh, well, we were all giving them, you know, jip, well, you know, just around the COVID time when Ireland were trying to come up with this new game plan with, you know, the, the three pod system, you know, the ball out the back, the tip on, the ball back inside or pull back. So you've got three or four options at every time. And, you know, Mike Cat was coming under serious pressure. We were saying, oh, Mike Cat, why are we bringing this guy in? He couldn't do it here, he couldn't do it there. And now all of a sudden he's under huge pressure, but it takes time. And that's maybe something with England, like are they maybe going to run out of time? They don't have enough time to, to be able to put a game plan together. But as you rightly said, it looks more like a, a kick battle and try and win that and force the opposition to make mistakes, for, force the opposition to, to make penalties. And that's something that Ireland did very well under Joe Smith. But yet again, when it came to knockout rugby, you know, it, it just it didn't work for us. Um, and I think they've learned a lot of lessons and, and Andy Farrell is, isn't long retired himself. Yeah. Like he's, he knows what it takes um, and yeah, he's a, he's a good man to be leading the boys and he seems to be loving every minute uh, and second that he's, he's spending here in Dublin and spending amongst the Irish boys. You know, who's your outside bet, so to speak? Who would you fancy to sort of cause an upset and, and maybe get to a quarter final or upset one of the big teams? Uh, it's tough. Um, I'm gonna go for a big call that hurts me to say it. But Japan have World Cup experience. Samoa are looking way better. I'm a proud Englishman, but a big call would be for England not to get to the quarterfinals. And it feels horrible saying that. But I do think that the position we're in, and I hope the boys prove me wrong, I really do. I want to see England in a quarterfinal, a semi-final, potentially a final. It's gonna to be tough, but a massive call could be that England don't make it out of the group and it ends up being pains me to say Argentina and Japan that qualify from our group so that hurts I hope I'm wrong and I've been wrong many times in my life but yeah England not to get out of the group would be a massive call and you Stevie what's the big call for you over this World Cup I think there's going to be a huge upset there has to be an upset during this competition I think it's going to come to the host nation France I think they'll set the world afire first night against New Zealand everybody will get behind the hype you know the hype train will be going in one direction but when they face hopefully South Africa in a World Cup quarter-final. I think they're going to come up short. You know, I just feel that the power game that South Africa have, the squad depth that they have, they're really well coached, as are France. But I just think that South Africa are going to have too much for them. They will come up with a game plan that will negate a lot of the French attack, that will frustrate them. South Africa don't mind kicking the ball away a lot as well. They have this rush up and in defence. They won't give them any time or space. Roman Entomac obviously isn't in this World Cup, so Jali Bear will be probably playing out half. You know, that changes things a little bit. So yeah, for me, that's gonna be the big upset, the big disappointment, the home nation to get knocked out in the quarters. There we go.